Welcome guys in this new video on the game engine series. In the previous video we talked about collision handler and uh, yeah, we were able to actually use our collision handler that we created in the video before the last one to handle collision so that our player were able to actually hit the ground as you can see right here. So in this video we're gonna be uh, moving forward and implement more state to the player like for example crouch. Uh, yeah, we already deal with the jump we did that in the in the previous video we have the run crouch jump and fall you can see we have different animation for each state we're gonna be um creating like a state machine for our player so that we can actually handle all states like any like jump crouch or whatever you might want to use as, as state or attack because i haven't mentioned that we also have this before we get started please hit that subscribe button in the description below Go ahead and support me on Patreon and you will also be able to download this, uh, the source code in the description. So let's get started. Now, um, yeah, I will simply explain because you know if we start writing code here, this video will, I think, will get to one hour, and we don't want that. That's why I will try to explain everything so that you guys can understand. I don't want anything to be, you know, hidden. So uh, down here we have a new, uh, some new states that we added. So if you remember, we on we only had in the previous video is jumping and grounded. Now we have something for running, jumping, falling, grounded, attacking, and crouching. So we have those four steps, uh, states, so to say. And we also have one more variable here for this time, which is the attack time. So this is actually the time that we give to the player to, uh, to attack. The animation, actually. This is for the animation. The time that the player takes to animate the attack. So when you see right here let me run this so when i try to attack you see there is a time given for that because if you don't if you don't give that time your animation will be too fast and some sometimes you will miss some frames and you won't actually have a smooth animation for for attack like this one right here where you can actually see almost all, all frames going on on the screen that's the idea we give like a time to the computer to be able to draw all those frames that's why we need this attack time right here the rest down here is just normal stuff we haven't changed anything and uh, we also have a new method called animation state I could have called it state um, animation or whatever but yeah and I also defined two variables you know when the player is running the force apply on the player on the uh, horizontal axis so forward or backward is gonna be this constant right here can change this and you know no matter what value you have it doesn't matter and we also have the attack time now we go back to the C++ file this is not you know you don't have to do this because if I remove this it will still work so I just did it like that even though I don't it's, it doesn't make sense actually but yeah we have this glitching effect but it does it for a couple of time and then stop but you can see it doesn't matter if we initialize that or not so I just did it because I wanted to make sure all those variables but I think the default value of of, of, um, of a boolean should be false right so I don't actually have to do this so I just put it there like that now we initialize all those variables this also not needed so we don't simply remove it so that we have less code but so I get those value for my buffer so as I said this will be different according to what kind of character you're using if you're using the same as me um, then you will have to you know you can use the same buffer variable for the collider and um, yeah you can simply get this in the source code in the description because I, I always put, put all those assets inside the gravity everything here is the same we haven't changed anything the draw function is still the same but we we changed a little bit we changed some couple of things in the animation class 
So let me go over. In our animation class, we had a variable here for the flip. So we remove that. We don't actually need to have something like that. We can simply pass that value by drawing. When we're drawing our, our player, we can simply pass that through and use it to draw. We don't have to set it every time we have to change the set. state. That's why our set property now only takes those four variables, the texture, sprite row, frame count, and speed. We're gonna be changing this later because we're gonna be creating also sequence animation in one of the upcoming videos where we actually um, deal with image sequence and we'll handle with uh, repeat and you know, all that kind of stuff. But for now, this is working and that's perfect. So. Yeah, and our draw function now takes this flip right here, which is gonna be given from the, because our player is a, is a game object, so it already has something like this. You just have to set that and give it to this draw function and it will handle the rest. And I think the rest is just straightforward. It's nothing, it's nothing that you have to add right here. That's normal. So let's go back to our warrior. Now, the draw function is still you can still uh, render the uh we can still render i can show you how the box collider is looking right now you can see i try to put it so that it really fits the player body the hands and this part right here are not included really want to make sure that when we collide and we leave some space between uh, the, uh the, that our hand can actually go forward and we, you know we have some space like you know you know what i mean i don't know how to call that so whatever so that was about the the box collider and um yeah i don't want to render that because that's not important right now so um we go now to the update function um it's it's not so different but before we talk about the update i just want to show you this animation state function um what it actually does is it's only it, it only check the current state of, of of our player so if the player is running then we set the player animation if the player is crouching we set the crouch animation if the player is jumping or falling and so go on and the default one is the idling and i also want to mention that i load all those images i loaded them in my engine so i have all those assets those um sprite sheets and i load them right here with those IDs so that you guys can get do not get confused about what is going on so it's basic it's straightforward now the update is a little bit different because I mean not just a little bit we haven't changed that much we created a function in the input in the event handler class called get access key so this actually returns so let's go ahead and see that this is the function this is the product in our input that edge we have this property right here called get axis key. So it actually takes the axis, which is this right here. We have horizontal and vertical. Those are the axis on the keyboard. So whenever I push the right up, you know, those button right here, those axis button on my keyboard. So I'm just gonna be using this function to handle that. So, and you can see the function is uh, defined as, as, as follow. We just make a switch case. If our axis is horizontal so case horizontal so we also use the d and e and a button to do the same thing so if i push right or d we want to return one if i push a or left we want to return minus one the same thing for the vertical we do it for s and w and up and down and we simply return the value so if nothing was pushed we simply return zero that's actually the idea of this get axis um i somehow um i saw this in i think unity unity has something like this so i just wanted to make something uh, which kind of you know look like that so we can simply go ahead and check here okay if we get axis horizontal is equal to forward forward was defined in our rigid body it is it's minus one so if this guy um it's one actually if this guy return one then we're simply gonna use that and move our player according to that that's why we can simply say okay forward run for run force and we flip the player we set the flip value and that flip value is simply pass up here by the by the draw function we do the same thing for the backward when the player is running in the 
opposite side and yeah it's the same principle now we have s s is for what is this for i don't remember input getting things s what was it for crouching ah this is for crouching yeah i'm sorry <laughs> the crouching is like when we push the down button we could have used this um get axis here for the vertical axis we could have used that right here but i didn't want to because i was actually not going to use for the up so i chose to simply use the s but you, you can still go out and test that so we simply check okay if we push the s button then we want to unset the force we don't want the player to move so we don't we just unset the force we set the force to zero that's why you can run while crushing that doesn't make sense so even though you push the forward button you can just run because you know it doesn't make sense that someone just crouch and keep running that's why we unset the force and set the crouching to true and this animation state down will simply take the value render the crouch state animation now we have the attack it's the same thing um, as you can see right here so um, we also add another uh, another um, condition so if we're not attacking we don't want our player to run while attacking let me remove this and show you what it looks like it's so weird you know so compile this oh what happened no, let's run this again i don't know why it, so if I attack while running, you see, um, I don't think we want something like this. It doesn't make sense, you know. You simply pass through the enemy and we don't want that. That's why we make sure, okay, if the player is running and he's not attacking, then apply this force. If that's not the case, he will simply stand. So that's why you can move uh, when while attacking. But you see, whenever the attack time ends, then the player move a little bit forward. And I think that's better. But you can still, you know, create another state where you say, okay, if attacking, then apply this force. You apply a, you know, a small force on the player so that he can move forward, but just a little bit. But we didn't want to do that. So that was the the attack right here, so, and we set the attack to true, and the guy down will simply take the value and render the animation. Now we go on to the jump. The jump is the same thing as before. We haven't changed anything about it. And uh, all we do is when we push the button for the first time, we check, okay, is the player grounded? Yes, then we set his jumping to true and he is not, he's no longer grounded. And now we simply apply a force on the rigid body upward. So we want it to go upward and that force is simply gonna be jump force. And yeah, here we simply, make sure okay if the player is still pushing the button this that button this g button then we want to make sure okay is this jumping set to true if that's the case we check the jump time and you know we keep applying that force on the player and we always decrease the jumping force till it reach a value smaller than zero then the player will start falling that's why we have this m jumping is equal to false right here and and jump time we reset the jump time now this is when the player is falling you know the player when the player start falling that means the velocity is greater than zero because you know the coordinate system on the screen is so uh, it start from up, from top right here so when i jump up the velocity is actually smaller than zero and when it start falling that means the velocity is greater than zero that's why we check okay is the velocity greater than zero then we're probably falling but we also want to make sure that the player is not grounded because it can happen that the player is grounded and you know we have like a value like a 10 value um, in the velocity which is smaller than zero. that's why we make sure okay the player is not grounded and the velocity is greater than zero on the y-axis so in that case the player is surely falling we use that to make the animation if not we just set it to false now this is where we handle the attack time what we simply does is the same thing as by jumping we say if the player is attacking and the attack time is greater than zero then we decrease the attack time so and when this condition is not fulfilled anymore we set attacking to false 
and we reinitialize the attack time to make sure the next time the player will hit the the the, the key to attack that will also start the, this attack one more time because if you don't set this condition will never be fulfilled and will never you know get into this that's actually the point about this and the rest here is the same thing we simply update the rigid body and we set the safe position now we move the player and yeah, we calculate the box collider the actual value of the box collider according to the transform of the player and now we check the collision on the x-axis if there is a collision we put the player back on the safe place and yeah we do the same thing on the y-axis uh, and we simply uh, have something more here which is about checking setting the value of the grounded if we have collision on the y-axis then simply make sure that grounded is equal to true and yeah we set the value to the last of the transform of this player to the last safe position we had and the rest and the rest down here is simply um you know we just can calculate the, the origin of the player and we call the animation state so it actually takes all these and we call this right here and it handles everything as we want it to do so um i think that's all for this video if i hope i haven't forgotten anything so that's all you needed in this uh, to be able to make animation um so as i said my computer is a little bit harsh and need to buy another one that's a good reason for you guys can go and support me on patreon so think about that uh i'm not you know somehow begging for money but just want to let that out in case someone could you know but that's all for now thank you guys for watching videos on medical channel don't leave without subscribing because that's also a way you can support my channel support my work and like this video and you know you can also share with those who who could simply have interest in this kind of content and uh, if you have question concern or any kind of thing you can simply write me in the comment section below you will still find the source code in the description below and yeah out oh.